Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Book Club, the Warhammer 40K Book Club. I am one of your hosts, Bricky. Joining me is my co-host, DK, and we're going to tell you about the books we read involving this horrible universe. Before we get started, if you want to check out the all the great new stuff that you can get at the Patreon down in the description, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. You can join the Discord, chat with your fellow people, get HD posters, bloopers if they happen, all the good stuff. And merch is also down there at orchidate.com. Get yourself some merch, shirts, tank tops. Now I'm a tank, I'm a tank, I'm a tank top and all kinds of other stuff. And maybe rep rep your Forge King boy, especially for you Iron Warriors fans, because he's a... Uh, oh, yeah. You know, he's kind of in that shtick. That's a spicy shirt. That's a... That's a oh, yeah, it's a spicy oh, design. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's about as death. spicy as a meat stick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Death to the false emperor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your corpse god will not save you from this elbow. That was actually really good, DK. Good job. <laughs> I think I think we found your your calling is impressions. I think we we found your wrestling your, impressions specifically. I got that macho man stuff down. You got that's your orc called. down pretty well too. That's true. That's true. Orc and the the orc and Randy Savage impressions. I feel like are slightly adjacent. You know, the, the, you, you got to tap into the same sort of guttural. Ooh yeah, it's a wah. You know, it's, it's, they're adjacent. I, I would agree. They're both meatheads, and you, when you think that's about true. it, that's true. Yeah, actually, yeah. that's not true. One is a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. Hey, so book, 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 book. Storm of Iron. Huh? Storm of Iron. Uh, okay. A a book that came out quite a while ago, like really two thousand and like two, I think. Ooh, oh, it is a oldie. Let me I didn't actually think it was that check old. this. Uh, well, the audiobook just came out like I think last year in 2022. Oh, um, okay. yeah, originally published 2002. Damn. And, and and because of that, you might uh, you might have like some statements about like how the Marines and stuff act in this book, and you might be like, that's strange, but it might make sense because this is kind of before some certain things were really fully fleshed. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we give our thoughts, Shy has a review. Oh, Shy has. Oh, that's right. She actually read this book, Bricky. Absolutely shocked. Oh wow! All right. Uh, who who who's gonna read her review? Is it gonna be me? You? Me you as Randy it. Savage? Um, <laughs> not, not as Randy Savage. <laughs> you don't want me to read her review? I enjoyed Storm of Iron. Anyway, uh, I enjoyed the Storm of Iron. It got a little bit exhausting in the last hour. But it kind of was thematically appropriate, so I didn't mind. I think it portrayed everyone fairly. Iron Warriors, Guard, and Spoilers! Imperial Fists are all portrayed well and respectfully, except the Adeptus Mechanicus, who are once again complete idiot idiots, which seems to be the theme among Warhammer books. Hanso is a fun protagonist. His character for me was defined during the duel where he faces the Imperial Commander, who gives him the whole, your face, noble lord, so-and-so, Commander Glorious, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and Hanzo's like, hello, I'm Hanzo, a traitor, a monger, and an asshole, and I'm gonna kill you now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Hawk's story was fun and caused one of the coolest moments of the book. The Avatar of Corn thing was unexpected, and as I heard, caused a lot of rage among certain people, so that's cool. Why would that cause rage? Uh, if you're an Iron War fan and want to learn more on how Iron Wars operate, I think it's a must-read because it, uh, well portrays their industrious efficiency, but also how that efficiency is hampered by their chaos degradation. Fun war book, strong light 8 or strong 7 out of 10. All right. Uh well I mean in- oh, interesting is that interesting. is that why because it's um it's it's the female guard slave that does it what's her name I keep wanting to call her Latara Sarin but that's not she's like it's Utorian it's close it's like something? it's like Lorana Lorana like, yeah 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 it's close it's something similar to that but um uh, it's, it's because the avatar of corn gets her and juices her up and she puts on power armor and is essentially a female chaos space marine and people I, I thought. That. I, I, I thought people were mad at it because it was a, a guard slave story, and I, I was expecting her to, like, revolt and, like, 
you'll never defeat us and like like the the strong hammer of the emperor and like yeah, charge him with like a melter gonna, grenade yeah i thought something. that's what it was going to be too like she would somehow through her bravery as a guards person uh you know she like you said she would have a grenade or she would trip an explosive and it would kill a bunch of iron warriors and obviously most specifically kroger because or, sorry, Shy, because screw Kroger. Uh, but yeah, I I wasn't expecting her to become the new avatar of Corn and Dawn Sarah might and convince all the Iron Warriors that she was Kroger. I mean, spoilers also, by the way. Uh, whatever. You, they've read the book if they're here, I hope. Yeah, but not everyone has. Um, I mean, I guess the, I mean, I guess that might be one of the things people got set out about because this was back in 2002 when uh, mm. Warhammer was a lot less tolerant. Joke, funny statement. It, re- it resembled yeah, yeah. the lore a lot more. The fan base. Yeah. Um, so things have gotten better. Before. I-, I thought it was because I was ex- uh, people were mad that it was uh, not going to be a guardsman overcoming their horrible situation story. Um, but I won't lie. I was certainly shocked when she. Uh, the grant hey, you know, Kroger got his comeuppets. He surely did. Ooh, he got his comeuppets. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was cool because he got his comeuppets. If she turned in some corn ass like avatar and then fought with them, I'd be like, ah, it's stupid. But him yeah. getting all butchered up was great. I like. Oh that. yeah, he 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 deserved it. He needed he needed to have something wildly awful happen to him. And boy, did he get it! Love it. It's crazy. For a lot of this book, I was like, "Are, are the are the guard gonna win? Are they gonna hold with? The, are are they gonna hold the, the, the defenses? Like, what the <laughs> hell? This is an I, I Iron was, Warrior book. They can't, right? I think because it was an Iron Warrior book, I knew that they wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they definitely had a good bit of back and forth sometimes. Um, what about a? Well, what what would you think of the book, DK? Uh, I I actually quite like the book. Um, I feel like I liked it because there was all it, it felt like there was always something interesting going on. Like if there wasn't combat, there was like some sort of shenanigans happening with uh, the Imperium guys. That was like, oh no, we're being someone's betraying us. Uh oh, well, who 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 blew the shafts? Why'd they blow the shafts? What's going on? Why is the planet so important? And then, like, the Iron Warriors are also like, oh, Hanzu, you filthy half-breed, you're a traitor. And Hanzu's like, oh, I'll get you guys one day. And then you got the nonsense with the Warsmith. And and it's just, it, it felt like there was always something interesting going on. And so I, I like that there were no real boring moments, I guess. That, I mean, that's fair. I I, so I think it's interesting because this is our first ever... Um, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, they are called apocalypse books, uh, where there's, oh. there's like a, a kind of a sub genre of 40 K books called apocalypse books, which is basically the story of an apocalyptic battle. Like yeah. what you would play. Cause you can play apocalypse on a uh, tabletop, which is like, you know, you have 2000 points on each side. I think apocalypse is like 40,000 points on each side. <laughs> Whoa. That's it's like a little week- bit of an upgrade. <laughs> it's like weekend long videos or weekend long games. Oh, um, wow. Okay. That's the whole point is it's like a gigantic scale battle. Yeah. Like a um, battle to end all battles on whatever poor planet you're on. Exactly. But so this is I, I remember I read Pandarax, which was the Grey Knight Dark Angels uh Catachin book against Nurgle, and that was also what you would call probably a um apocalyptic apocalypse book. Mm-hmm. Uh and so I guess this is your your first like foray into apocalypse books, which is basically just the book is the battle. It's the whole battle, and that's the whole book. Yeah. And 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 boy it was. Uh and that, boy that, it was the battle for Hydrocortatus. Um what would you what would you rate out of ten while we're starting this off? I would give it a strong eight out of ten. It's, An eight it's, out of ten. It's solid. It's good. Is it perfect? Eh, maybe not, but I would still recommend it highly. So yeah, it's it's one of the better books I've read. Sure. All right. Um, I, I'm not as I'm not as keen on it. Oh really? Oh, no, I'm okay. I'm like a five. A five. I'm Whoa. like a five. Is this is it just because this is my first foray into apocalypse books or like what it what it a five? 
Why would why in the hell would would my rating change well, because of your foray into oh, no, apocalypse no, no. books? Like, I was thinking like I was gonna give it a four for the fourth legion, but I chose that that's no, just too mean. So I was just thinking like, am, am I giving it such a higher rating, and do I like it so much more because this is like my first time reading an apocalypse book, and maybe like there's something about other apocalypse style books that makes this one look a little lesser by comparison. Is that so I mean, th- there's there's a lot of reasons there's like there's like six parts that that kind of that kind of uh, bring it down and, and it, obviously it's like my oh yeah bu- it's my bias yeah. it's it's sort of my bias well one I'm not huge on apocalypse books to begin with uh, um, okay gotcha. it's just not gotcha. really my sh- my my favorite thing I'm very well remember out of all the books we've read um. I mean, obviously, the Night Lords are the top ones, uh, <laughs> no. but there's like like Bloodlines is one of my favorite books, and it has like almost no battles at all. Oh, that's true. We differed very much on our opinions of Bloodlines, too, where we were kind of flip flopped, where like I kind of was like, eh, it's so boring. Nothing happened. And you really like the the sort of intrigue behind it. My issue is mainly the fact that uh, like most apocalypse books don't focus a shitload on, on the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and while there is a little bit, like I, I liked, um, what was it? There, there were a couple of characters I liked. I liked Guardsman Falk. The, I, I agree with Shy. The missile scene, the missile scene was the best part of the entire book. The missile scene was great. I'm not gonna lie, that is pretty fantastic. Especially when they're like, uh, "Hey, Hawk, here's what we need you to do," and he's like, "You want me to what?" He, I, I, I liked that. I liked the the disconnect between him and the uh, and and all of his orders. Mm-hmm. Um, I in I also, but but yeah, like a lot of the the Iron Warrior stuff. Like I, I don't know, Hanzu didn't do much for me. Really, he was I kind of a Hanzu. wet. I kind of I thought he was a bit of a wet blanket. I liked the Warsmith the most. I thought he was a baller. Oh yes, the Warsmith was very cool. I I loved like the descriptions of like how disgusting he made you feel. Like, even if you were chaos, they were like, "Oh, he makes my skin crawl, and I want to vomit." And oh, yuck. but like it's that I liked. Uh, I liked the gal who turned all corn, um, but she didn't get a lot of screen time. Yeah, that's she was, true. She didn't. Yeah, she was only there a little bit. I, I think there's also like obviously the guards. The guard stuff besides Falk was really just kind of mid. Uh, Hanzu losing his arm to a random uh, Castellan with a power sword was a little shocking. Oh yeah, high Castellan and Vobon. Yeah, it didn't really. I was like, uh, uh, oh. Yeah, I I gotta be honest. When I read that part, I was like, did I miss? Something about because I know that Vobon was the high castellan and that's an important role. He's like the leader of the people in in Hydra Cordatus. But I was like, he's not even a space marine, is he? Like, he's not. He's he's kind of just a a human, isn't he? Or am I? Did I mix things up and I don't understand what a high castellan is? No, you're correct. The high castellan is just a very high ranking militarum officer. Yeah, I I do find I did find it a little hard to believe that he took Hanzu to the limit where Hanzu had to sacrifice his arm in order to kill Vobin. There, there is that. That's what I was saying earlier about the whole. This mm-hmm. book was made in two thousand and two because we also kind of had a little bit of this with um, Gaunt's Ghost when we first read it, where like an oh, Iron Warrior yeah. came out of an elevator and they killed him with like seven guys on high uh, powered lads. True, true. And you're it like varies from author to author as to how yeah. powerful a space marine actually is. Although I don't know, I now I'm a little conflict because. It was nice that, like, the Imperium didn't just roll over to the Iron Warriors and that they actually put up a fight. It's so kind of nice I, that it I, wasn't I, just a total steamroll, right? So, uh, it's kind of. So, so Shai makes a point where Hanzu's a cool guy. He was made as a living insult with Imperial Fist Gene C. Yeah. Spitting on the whole thing. I, I would agree. Maybe Wet Blanket's the wrong word. He was a stoic, grumbly Iron Warrior. He just wasn't very interesting to me. Like he he fit the Iron Warrior thing plenty well. He just wasn't a very interesting character to me. Yeah. But I, I got to be honest, like yeah, the guard held off pretty well. The guard did some pretty cool stuff. I liked, mm-hmm. I liked the the some of the the basilisk artillery firing, and I liked I liked all that kind of stuff. But the Imperial fists arrive and then just get clobbered, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> bodied within like the first hour of their arrival. It's so hilarious yeah. how bad they get beat. Well, they show up and they they uh they don't they don't they help 
in the defenses for like a day and then yeah the next day when it's like the main offensive of the iron warriors it's like yeah they kind of just get bodied their librarian gets absolutely dunked on uh yeah yeah that's fair they do they do kind of get dunked on it, it's uh, they obviously arrive turn the tides and then they they go back and they it's just eh. Eh. it's true their librarian <laughs> did try to mess with the the avatar of corn which not gonna go well for your average librarian true true right so so i mean i don't know i i kind of like faded in and out of consciousness listening to this book <laughs> i was like eh, no, 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 artillery fire eh, no, no, basilisk eh, slaves dying slaves slaves being killed mm-hmm. uh iron warrior shooting bolter fire okay okay <laughs> oh this missile scene is really good i love okay yeah. six six the last like to like the last like third i was a bit more into it than i was um in the first two thirds mm-hmm. uh but but i don't know it doesn't have a lot for me it, honestly okay. if anything i think it's just a really good book showing the strategies of the iron warriors oh, watch as yeah, we yeah. dig a million trenches and fire demonic howitzers at you for like days yep, yep. that they- part's cool Dig in the trenches to get under the under the walls and plant the explosives to weaken it. Yeah, yeah. Siege, siege, siege. Right. So. Uh, also, yeah the uh, the the Iron War is using the uh, prisoners of war to determine how far determine the ranges. The range. <laughs> oh yeah, that that was that was absolutely some Saving Private Ryan shit for the for the one gal. Oh yeah, um, that was. Uh, Ooh. But uh, but that was that was pretty pretty great because that that like I said shows off all of the Iron Warriors mm-hmm. methods and uh, how chaos are they? Well, I'm glad you asked. It, it is interesting because they don't seem to detest they don't detest chaos like um like say the well from from us reading the Night Lords books they some of them detest chaos not all of them but some of mm. them. Yeah. Um. But the Iron Warriors don't really detest chaos. They seem them as more of like a means to the to an end. Mm-hmm. Um, like 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 tools, which makes sense because Iron yeah. Warriors are like grinding industry. Mm-hmm. I I also did like um I forget who said it, but where they are like convinced that like hey everybody needs to go to chaos because that's the only way humans are gonna survive in this crazy world with Eldar's orcs and alien monstrosities it's like you gotta go to chaos chaos is the only way humanity has any chance of survival we gotta get chaos roided up otherwise humanity no chance um i don't know why but i thought that was like an interesting like mindset for chaos to have that they're actually doing this for humanity's betterment which is kind of a horacy thing like that's kind of like a horace-esque mindset right um it's hard to tell because horace was so corrupted yeah, by that point. Also, it's also because Big E was a liar and they were very upset about Big E being a liar. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I will say that, yeah, it's the idea is that humanity can't survive a war with the Eldar, Tyranids, Catan and Necrons and so on yeah. um, unless they are juiced up to the gills by chaos. And so Just there is a bit of that. Fair. It's hard. It's hard to tell how much of that is is cha- is the chaos corruption speaking Mm-hmm. True, um true but you know it all it, it really depends um i i will say one of the reasons i my score was brought down a little bit too it's not actually a fault of the writing it's not like a graham mcneil issue uh i didn't thoroughly enjoy the va for the audiobook oh really i, I thought the va did a did a fine job i mean it was nothing like like outlandishly amazing but it was i was like this, this is good this is i, I enjoyed him my my issue for him was um like most british uh, vAs he does the guardsman perfectly um but i <laughs> sure. i think he, he doesn't have enough voices like a lot of the oh, like yeah. he sometimes would be like mego something said this and the mego just sounded like a guard colonel and i'm like right. well wait he needs to be a lot more like horse and doggy like this like mm-hmm. the other ones right um, okay a lot of the iron warriors kind of blended together there wasn't a, a huge range for impressions i could have used a bit more okay i mean i i now that you say that, yeah it's true 
A lot of them did sound very similar, maybe just very slight changes. But yeah, that's. I, I, I it was a, it was a little bit of that. Maybe I'm being a pedantic asshole, but um, I mean, obviously, I mean, if that's how you felt, that's how you felt. Like that's you know, there's nothing wrong. I mean, with that. the VA wasn't like was was far from bad. He he worked oh, sure, well sure. with the, with a lot of the reading of the book itself, <clears throat> but for some of the voices, that's where I kind of it kind of fell short for me. Yeah. But, how uh, did you how did you how did you feel about the admec being portrayed as mindless idiots again? You know, um, you know, actually, that's, that's funny you say that. Uh, Shy mentioned yeah. uh, Brutal Cunning was a lot like this book, but I liked that one. Mm-hmm. And and uh, to retort on that one, Adnek was also stupid in that book. They were um, very dumb in that book. They were, yeah. But uh, I found the the Brutal Cunning to be a lot better from character development. Also because it was just, it was funny. Yeah. It's different. It's different when like the most apocalyptic proportions are happening, and it's an orc a grot, a two orcs a grot and a squig driving a car really fast into a titan. Into a like, titan, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more fun and that way, and winning. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, you know, you know, I love my guard to death, but but I we heard like fifteen the enemies of chaos are at our door. Men speeches in this book and i'm like oh my god oh that's true there were a lot of those speeches of like this could be your last day man fight to the death and yeah i guess they did do that quite a bit didn't they i feel like diehard guard fans were just like creaming their jorts and i'm sitting here like (laughs) i've heard this so many times i need something a little bit more substantial it's different when gaunt or or caiaphas kane does it because they have character this is just random castellan dude man i feel like that's one of the reasons i'm so surprised you gave this a five is because like the guard are shown in like even though they don't necessarily win they're shown in a pretty good light for holding off the iron warriors for as long as they did and i was like man bricky has got to be just orgasmic over how well the guard are doing right now and i'm and then you're just ah five i'm just like what what I, th- I think what? we had this conversation before. I don't. I don't find uh, the competency to be the interesting part. <laughs> I, I, I need. I need a good character to be showing yeah. off the competency. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's like. It's like. Uh, what is it like? I don't know. It, it, it's like when when um, we read. Uh, oh crap! What was it? Was it Caiaphas Kane? It might have been. Oh yeah, it was Caiaphas Kane. Uh, it, it was at the end of Caiaphas Kane when um, the the prisoner or like like death row uh, sniper guardsman kind of guy kind of. Oh yeah. Was you know he was like he would kind of showed it. Uh, he died, which was unfortunate, but he was showing off like a lot of really good prowess at the end mm-hmm. and really really being kind of a baller. And all he did was shoot a couple gene stealers. I was um, mad that he died. Me too, but he his like his character was so much more interesting. Like, uh, miss me with the with the five thousand basilisk artillery. Hold the line, <laughs> men. Hit hit me with those those strong character moments, and I I give so much more of a shit. Okay, okay. Dang. That's 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 I don't know. That, that's just kind of the way I feel. I mean, okay. hey, I just finished up Disco Elysium and. <laughs> and the character is the most pathetic, <laughs> pathetic person ever. Like it's all about the character. True, true. You gotta, you gotta have those strong, believable characters that really get you invested, instead of just yeah. Okay, I, I see where you're coming from. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with your point of view. That's why, uh, it's why Guardsman Falk is the best part of the guard in this whole book. Is it Falk or Hawk? I thought it was Hawk. Hawk. It's Hawk. You're right. Oh, okay. It's Hawk. I screwed up. <laughs> I was like, are we, is Guy, Guy Fawk? Is, Guy Fieri? <laughs> Guy Fieri? Guy Fox? Remember, we're out remember here the 5th in of November? Hydra Cordatus, where we're going to find the greatest barbecue on this side of the Segmentum Solar. <laughs> we're rolling out. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, But, I mean, he was I, he was the best part of the guard because he at least had character. He was characterized. He was a, a shit, like a shithead, but he kind of... He got a little slacker. better, you know. He started doing a good job at the end. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah, I also kind of like because at the at the very beginning of the book, he was uh, reprimanded and punished for that cold listening station because I I showed up late to work because I was too drunk. What do they want from me? It's Hydra Cordatus. 
And every time they talk about him on the uh, on the <laughs> phone, they're always like, "Oh my god, it's 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 Hawk again." We're leaving this up to Hawk. Are you guys sure? I don't. His record is not good. Mm. Yeah. Hence the missile part being the best part of the book because it's all set up and now he's a hero because with even after being a screw up and it's like yay. Yep, yep. yep. And, uh, might um, might be a little spoiler, but uh, I were you expecting him to to live? No, end? I really I was, wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting him to like, oh guys, I'm here, save me, save me, and then I was expecting them to literally blow the planet, and then he would just die in an eruption of fire and and you know destruction i was i wasn't expecting an imperial fist chip to land and be like don't worry we got you and take him back home i was also not expecting the imperial fists to get mulched like manure (laughs) what wasn't it um what was his name uh the the terminator guy fenix forex 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 just like (laughs) just dropped like like 10 of them Dude, by when himself? he was in the when he was in the tunnels, he took on like a whole platoon of imperial fists after they tried to like wash them out with literal sewage. <laughs> yeah, he was a that was a Forex was a bad man. Forex was Forex did not live to tell the tale, but no, uh, he, he couldn't take two warhounds. No, he unfortunately could only, not. He could, he could only get one of them. Dang. <laughs> He's not as cool as Lorgar, who got <laughs> shot dead fa- in the face with one of them. Yeah, he could only take on one Warhound with his Terminators. Unfortunate. Uh, the, I mean, I, I, I will say a lot of the the ending things for all the characters, I think, is what uh, what salvaged the book a little bit for me because I didn't expect to hear Falk live. Didn't expect um, uh, the gal to turn into an avatar of chaos of corn and murder. <laughs> absolutely. Librarian. Well, no, not the librarian. Well, him too, but um, the the corn iron warrior guy. Um, oh, 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 uh, uh, um, Kroger. Kroger. Ooh, didn't did turned not expect his head that. Into a bloody mess on the floor. <laughs> That was great. Yeah. Uh, and, and the warsmith ascending to demonhood. Oh, that, yep, yep, because they, because the, the big reveal was that, because well, the whole book, they're like, why do we care about Hydrocordatus again? This is a nowhere backwater little nothing planet. It's like, oh, by the way, look at all the gene seed. and Which, yeah. didn't they, well, oh, yeah, that's right. Didn't the Imperial Fist send just like a bunch of guardsmen to guard the gene seed? Yeah, like what, there you weren't like any send, fists there. You would think they would send the Space Marines to guard the Gene Seed. Uh, yeah, that was shocking to me. I was like, "Wait!" I was like, "Go to find the Gene Seed." They're like, "What?" But what? We'll buy you time. Well, oh no, wait! They didn't go to defend the Gene Seed. They all knew that they were like, "Okay, look, we're losing this battle." So, hey, guard, do us a big favor. We'll hold off these Chaos Space Marines. You guys. Go destroy all the gene seed because it's way better if all of that stuff is just destroyed and unusable rather than ooh, chaos got it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was also part of an ad mech thing. Yeah, they didn't tell anyone because, and that's that's why they made the guard take the <clears throat> detox pills because they mm-hmm. didn't want anybody knowing that uh, that there was any gene seed there. Yeah, I, I will say it was nice that there was a detox pill reveal at the end. I was like, mm-hmm. they keep mentioning this thing, but nothing's coming of it. I'm like, ah, okay. I mean, I, I figured once Hawk was like, oh, no, I've run out of detox pills. But shockingly, I feel great. I feel amazing. I feel, you know, I feel strong. I I feel more capable. My endurance is up. Ooh, wee. I was like, okay, those detox yeah. pills are poison. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. They're 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 tricking you. Yep, 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 yep. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that's the reason for at the moment we're we're having our uh, our like not confusion, but our Difference we're talking about opinions. all the we're talking about all the weird parts of the story, all the mm-hmm. bizarre parts of the story. But at the same time, it's kind of not the point because this is it's an apocalypse book. This is like you know, it's about it's about a giant battle with titans. True. True. Oh, let's also not gloss over the uh, tiered bio ship they repurposed. What? In the beginning. In the, what? Do I not remember this? 
That, oh, did that go over your head? Oh shit! I no, think the- it went. I think that went right over my head. And granted, I took a little bit of a break between reading the first bit and the last bit, so uh, this might just be an instance of, "Hey, look, the memory is just not clicking like it used to." But excuse me. Yeah, oh yeah, they they took they took a Tyranid ship screwed it all up, infected it with the Technovirus Obliterator virus, and then shoved it into the Eye of Terror, terror into becoming this hybrid Tyranid plus metal Iron Warrior ship. When the when the Titans first got dropped, it was a giant tentacle holding it from the sky, bringing it oh. down and going bloop, and then bring just, it right back up. I just thought that was some weird chaos stuff. Well, it I was, guess I didn't, but yeah, yeah. I guess I didn't realize they had repurposed a Tyranid shit. I, I guess I just thought it was like, oh yeah, that's it's just some chaos stuff. That's what the tentacles are for. Just oh look, chaos. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Oh that, yeah. C- I, that was completely lost on me. Did not realize that. Just thought it was, uh, yeah, chaos. Sure, tentacles. Sure. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 It's hey, it is a uh, it is a huge um, what is it uh, a huge statement to be yeah. said that they can do that because I don't think anyone's done it before. It, I feel like it was or just sense. a throwaway <laughs> li- or or sense. I feel like it was just a throwaway line in the beginning of something to cool to happen, but now that he's inadvertently made it so that Iron Warriors are the only people who have probably at all at all been able to to take over the tyranids yeah backwards compatibility on the tyranid ship let's go <laughs> uh some of their war machines are actually enslaved demon engines and when imperial fists set them loose they immediately turn on iron warriors oh yeah i, I yeah. remember seeing that yep and then that, the uh, missile just yeah. blows everything to pieces and it doesn't matter what they had I, I must say the uh, it was kind of funny when or interesting when the guardsmen were like getting on top of the demon engines to blow it up and they just got like horribly sick um, <laughs> and, and felt terrible. Mm-hmm. As uh, but you then should when you're dealing with chaos, yeah, there's a tiny part, though, where one dude vomits blood when he's on it and then <laughs> just like into the grates and then the demon just goes <laughs> just sucks Yummy. it all up. And I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> the floor is, is drinking it. Ew. So it's so appropriately chaos. So appropriately chaos. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. uh it's good stuff. Yeah. I I enjoyed it. And and Hanzu gets his uh gets his uh come up not come up but he gets his reward at the end. After the yes. warsmith after the warsmith goes to Demon Hood, he's like, Look, I can't obviously <laughs> I'm a demon prince. I can't stick around here anymore. So Hanzu, uh, you're the warsmith now. Although, I mean, I guess he kinda had to because, you know, all of his other captains were, you know, dead. One was butchered by the the female slave he brought on, and the other one died by because he couldn't take yeah. on two, two titans. titans. Yeah, he can only take the one titan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I mean the the book itself. If you're like, I want to learn about Iron Warriors, or I want a big battle that's that's a little shut your brain off and just mm-hmm. watch the carnage. Totally, it's a totally fine book for those kinds of people. I think for me, I'm just not a uh, I'm not big on that kind of topic. Yeah, it's it's like if you were to give me a, a rom com uh, movie or something, <laughs> I'd be like, I'm sure it's fine for the people who want to watch it, but for me, eh. yeah, I think this is like the perfect like sort of like this. This is how Bricky and I differentiate what we like in books, because like you said, in Bloodlines, man, you love that. Like that was oh, like God, your thing. Good book, and and I was like. But but where's my war warhammer? Where where are my space marines? Where's my crazy battle? Where's my crazy chaos? And it's like that's exactly what this book has, right? And it's just this is like the perfect little mm, sampling of like our our different tastes in books, which is fun. I, I I must I must say, um, you you know the 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 soy jack per um uh. Parabola, or is or is it the inverse U curve? The soy Jack parabola. The, sorry, the the so, the Wojak uh, bell curve. Uh, okay, I, I'm I'm I about to not. make I'm about to <laughs> I'm about to make fun of you right now, and I apologize. Oh um, man, again. But uh, oh. but th- this is this is how I I, I see this right now. Uh, you you are the newbie to Warhammer. I'm the old man in the Warhammer. I'm tired of Space Marines, so I've got the hood on uh, on the right, and you've got the and you, sir. I have depicted you as the crying Zoomer <laughs> Soyjack. 
in the center. We were like, where's my space marines? I mean, fair. Fair. I, I do like it when, like, the space marines and the chaos space marines show up and just start boltering everything and just going a little kooky crazy. And, yeah, I mean, I haven't been in the hobby for, you know over a decade so it's it's all still cool to me i still like space marines going all space marini shy is inside the bell with a gun yeah she is the bell there's a, i'm i like these these are pretty good shy <laughs> the, um, the soy jack bell curves hell yeah <laughs> i uh i like the soy jack bell curves a lot but um <laughs> But no, no, I mean, it's just I think I think I'm kind of want, wanting more a little bit. But but Shy makes a good point. It's a book that's mostly combat. If you like that and you want to read it, go to town. Yeah. Um, I would have just like a little bit more development on the characters that have that do the combat. Yeah. Um, you know, you know what I, I wanted? I wanted an inverse of Master of Mankind. Master of Mankind, the, the first two thirds were a massive, nothing but character development slog, which <laughs> then made the last third admittedly pretty great because of the development. But yeah. overall, the book was inactive. Yeah. I needed the reverse. I needed the first third to be really big on character stuff and then the other two thirds to just be murder in action. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would have been good. I would have gone for that. Sure. Sure. Develop develop these characters into a fine red mist. Develop these nuts. Hey. Hey. All hey. right. Yeah, I, I was going to say, there's not a whole lot uh, else to cover about our feelings on, uh, hence on the, the Storm um, of Iron, eh? Hey, hence, hence it's, a, it's a battle book. It was battle yeah. battle. Was ba- there's a little development. There's a little drama in the camps between battles. But yeah, for the most part, it is... Space Marine versus Chaos and Iron Guard or Iron Guard uh, Imperial Fists. <laughs> Imperial Fists, yeah, yeah. And, the, the most yeah. the most developed character was Guardsman Hawk, and that's probably why I liked him the most. Yeah, I suppose he probably is the most developed. They try with Hanzu. They try to really put a spotlight on Hanzu, but I don't know if he gets quite as developed as they would have liked because for most of the book you're right he comes across as very much just like oh man my stupid gene seed why does everybody hate me i'm such a good soldier i deserve more well i it's also because uh hanzu gets i I think this is like the setup i think it's the first time you actually i think this is hanzu's first ever appearance in a book and and then and then there's a first appearance of hanzu ever I in think so. And then oh. after that, there's a book called uh, Dead Sky Black Sun. And, and then he, I think he slowly gets more development with time. But I think this is, yeah, this is his first ever book. When, uh, when, it, how far after this is the uh, Demon Kilbasa? Um, no, next one is Dead Sky Black Sun, which is, um, when he gets his metal arm, I believe. Oh, oh. Wait, are, that's true. Oh, is, Des, is Dead Sky Black Sun the Demon Kobasa one? Oh, okay. So, oh, oh, you're right. You're right. Sorry, this is sorry. Dead Sky Black Sun is the is the Ultramarine novel. You're correct. My bad. So, is he using Gene Seed he got from Hydra Cordatus to do the Demon Kilbasa stuff? If it's the literal next one, that must be where he got the Gene Seed for the Kilbasa, right? So that he could actually make Chaos Space Marines in that weird thing. Um, it says he returned to Medrungar with the Gene Seed captured. Uh, it's, though he claimed the Gene Seed was sent to Abaddon, he kept some for himself using the captured Gene Seed. He constructed an unusual manufacturer system, the Demon Kebaba. Yes. So he kept hey, some of it. Of course, because he's Chaos. Of course, he's not going to send all of it to Abby. And I believe this is also the book that he gets the um, his metal arm. Okay, where it's actually like, because now it's just like, in this book, he gets a metal arm, but it's not like, it's not like the living metal that the Necron uses. It's not like the Necrodermis, right? He just has a funky, chaosy mechanical arm now. Uh, yeah, he has the, the, the Necron metal, living metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's something to make you happy, DK. Oh, oh it's boy. probably going to be some ultramarine murdering. He stole living metal arm from Ultramarine. What a chat. 
What a great guy, this Hanzu. Love him. Siege. 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 Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good times. Love it. Love it. All right. Um, I am ready for the next book. Ooh. You, like, you already have it picked out, planned out? Yes, you guys, sir. Oh, all right. It's Hell's Reach, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, get dunked on everyone that's been asking for that. I, I am I am not I'm not interested <laughs> in another goddamn Space Marine book. Actually, what was All the right. book before Storm of Iron? Uh, well, Assassinorum. Oh, Assassinorum was great. That was great. All right, so not that one. Um, no, I think it's finally time we read this book. We've waited too long. It's 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 recommended every day of our lives. I think it's time we finally read Eisenhorn. Oh, <gasps> Eisenhorn, the, he's the this is like the detective one, right? It's the inquisitor detective one. Yep, yep. Oh boy. All right, now we can finally see what all the hype is about cuz yeah, this gets recommended every day in the comments. Let's go. Just 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 the first. Just the first one. Just the first one. What's the first one called? I actually don't know. There's the Eisenhorn omnibus, but that, those are normally like multiple books. Oh. Well, I, uh, read the first Eisenhorn book, then, everyone, for oh. for the next thingamadoodle. First Eisenhorn book. <laughs> Which book is the first of the Eisenhorn trilogy? It's called Xenos. Oh, okay, cool. Gee, I wonder if aliens are involved. Uh, no, probably not. No, no, it's called Xenos. There's no way. There's no it's way. written by Dan Abnett, who uh, wrote a good old um, uh, God's Ghost. Oh, okay. So high expectations. The Inquisition moves amongst mankind like an avenging shadow, striking down all the enemies of humanity with uncompromising ruthlessness. When he finally corners an old foe, Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn is drawn into a sinister conspiracy. <gasps> no. I think I there's a I think there's a Arbides guy on the cover, like a Judge Dredd looking dude. <laughs> Arbides nuts. God damn it. <laughs> And now every time a book is like, oh, a sinister conspiracy, it's like, it's the ad mech, isn't it? The ad mech are doing some weird thing, aren't they? The ad mech are doing some funky stuff. Because, man, uh, are, at some point we're going to get a book where they respect the ad mech, right? And don't paint them as, like, basically traitors, right? At some point we're going to get that, right? I mean, I guess we we did, uh, we did, um, Belisarius Call. I mean, sure, but that, they don't paint Call in the best light as being, like, the greatest for the Imperium, since he's always doing stuff he's not supposed to. Right? Like, he's constantly inventing new things. Everybody hates him for making yeah. Primera Space Marines. It's not like he's painted in a great light, either, even in his own freaking book. All right, screw this shit. We're reading Eisenhorn. Get, yeah, 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 yeah. Get, get out of here. Stinky. <laughs> Thank you.